Um, my cat is up gonna in the jump nice, by the way. That's fine. He's scratching my. Ah! Hi, White Sox. Oh, there goes instant viewer uptick. There it goes. Oh, there, you know, subscribe, subscribe. This video is brought to you by Try the World. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local and not so local music and the people that make it, including my guest. And my guest today is a part of DI Records and a dancer, a model, and front woman for a symphonic metal band that is based out of Eindhoven in the Netherlands. So a Dutch band, my first one of these. Uh, their music is born out of poetry and is known for being full of pure, raw, beautiful, and intense emotions that are presented in a musical package. Their self-titled album is uh, coming out soon, I believe. Oh, it's so out. So please welcome to the channel. Oh, it's out. Okay. Yeah. Self-titled album is out now. Please welcome to the channel, Vero from Heaven Queen. Hello. Hey, Thank you for having me. All right. Love, Vero. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome welcome uh thank you for coming on room six yes um it is it is amazing um i, I am correct you're on di records correct no we have no record label at all we uh see that i i di records is out of, based out of philadelphia but they have been giving me uh they like what i do and have been just sending me a ton of interviews and a ton of music to review which is awesome but I mean, I'm interviewing people in in Russia and, and the country of Georgia and uh, Buenos Aires. So this just felt right in there. And a lot of them are, are female fronted bands. And so and a lot of symphonic metal. I don't know what that's about. But um, we have some enthusiastic like, followers. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I apologize. Not, no, not don't be. Records. I'm starting at interviews going great. I'm starting <laughs> out strong. Well, so, we're human <laughs> and that makes it a good interview. Thank you. Um, you're very kind. <laughs> so right off the bat, I want to say, uh, why uh, why the name Heaven Queen? Uh, it actually came from when I was singing at the Nightwish Weeks in Finland. And uh, one of the songs of, Heaven, of, of uh, Nightwish is Dead to the World. And it's also about, uh, or, and that boy's poem. And you have the phrase like, Heaven Queen, carry me. Oh, yeah, that is actually uh, the part where Heaven Queen comes in, like um, dealing with that a lot, the children that I had. And there was this cover band who already had the name Heaven Queen. And with the permission of two Omas, they signed it over to me because, yeah, they thought if you have a band, you should name it like that because your music is about it. And um, that's how we got the name. Awesome. So it's 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 an homage almost to this other band. Well, Nightwish meant a lot to me, and uh, especially their music helped me through my own traumas. And because my lyrics are very autobiographic, and talking about my uh, traumas through music, I try to help others overcome theirs. Next to just making awesome music, this is a big deal for me. And yeah. To have like this little thingies that uh, gives back also to Nightwish, that uh, only seems proper. Of course, pay it forward, so to speak. Yes, or, I guess pay it back. I just want to um, give back to the world what music gave to me. There you go. Um, and and you mentioned about trauma, and uh, we're going to get into that a little bit and how it's it's uh, influenced you know your music and also um, affected you know, how, how the music has been created. But before we get into that, I just want to say, um, I forgot to mention, if you don't know who Heaven Queen or Lavero are, thank you for watching. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. And if you can give, if you can give them um, kind of like, tell people who, who you are, what do you do in the band? And uh, who else is in the band that we're missing? Um, well, to start off with myself, I'm Lavero. I'm a singer since I was three years old. Uh, I had a previous band in uh, Finland, what was called Maidens of the North. I was also the founder there. Unfortunately, the band stopped and uh, yeah, I moved back to the Netherlands and I needed to create music. 
I've been through a lot of things and therefore I wrote a lot of poems and that's how Heaven Queen was born because um, I found some great musicians and then COVID hit and all that other stuff. So I had a complete lineup change over the last 10 years that I've been working on this album. And now uh, the old bass player from Imperial Age and also the bass player from Ismaros and Anna Kayara, he saw my lyrics, we became friends. And uh, at one point I just sent in my rehearsal tapes because he wanted to know what kind of sound I had in mind. And a few weeks later, he sent me all these demos completely finished. Like, okay, this is what you wanted, right? I'm like, yes, exactly what I wanted. Okay, start recording. I'm like, whoa, this is going so fast. And uh, first we had also uh, a drum uh, track made by uh, the computer. But meanwhile, I was searching for new musicians and one of my dear friends, Valisva, uh, I call him Val because my Bulgarian is not that good. He's from Bulgaria and he was the previous drummer of Rampart. And I worked with them at Wacke and in other uh, occasions. So when he said, do you still need a drummer? I was like, oh my God, of course I want you. It's, it's not easy to have musicians spread all over the world, but still, to have him, it, he's my little brother. And yeah, he just came in within a few weeks. He recorded all the drums on the album. And uh, the Igor Kiff from Kiff Records actually did all the guitar parts together with Belt. And um, yeah, now we have our guitarist for the live shows. That is uh, a guy also called Dimitri. So uh, his nickname is Buzzy. And that's why we call him by his nickname. Like Dima Belf is also Dimitri. So just to avoid confusion. We have now Belf and we have Buzzy. Wow, it sounds like you got your hands full there. Yeah, but they're all lovely guys. And I like to have my band like a family uh, feeling. Not only uh, working with hired guns, that would be much easier, but because everything is so personal and I'm planning to go on the road and travel the world, bring the music to the people, I want that with um, a steady band, with people you can trust and actually can coexist with, even in a crappy little van, if needed. Ah, uh, yes, the crappy little van. But uh, it's always better if you, you know people are going to be there next month and not have to constantly be like, I need somebody for this next next gig. Who, who you know, who's available? Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. And, and it gives it, oh, the best ingredient for um, a tight sounding band and a band that knows <coughs> who's going to do what is, t is time together. So it sounds like you're getting that. And that's awesome. Even though you're not physically together for a lot of it. Yeah. And one of the shows I was like, completely blank at one point like oh shit where am i in this music this, so i turn around and val the drummer he knows every song inside out so i and he's just mimicking and singing along I'm like, oh there we are okay one two three blah 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 <laughs> yes uh val to the say to the, to the rescue nice yes yeah uh, I, but also the bass he gives them this extra and then, oh yeah we we coexist so well also on the stage and we haven't done much shows yet, but um, yeah, with these guys, I trust myself that whenever I, I lose my lyrics or I feel uncomfortable with the situation, they fix it with just a sign of my eyes like, OK, help. <laughs> I don't know how other bands work like that, but for me, this works very well. I could not do it without my uh, guys. <laughs> sounds like it. Um... Speaking of not being able to do it without someone, I want to thank everyone watching, especially my subscribers. I really can't do this without you guys. I, I do appreciate all of you. If you want to be featured on the channel, like Vero, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the things I'm up to online and also how you can support the channel should you so choose. And um, ah, what the heck, while you're down there, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. All those YouTube things. Thank you. Um, before we move on to more, more, uh, questions, I also wanted to, um, 
give a, a, a special shout out to my wife. Aww. It's at, at time of recording, it is five days before Valentine's Day, and she has been sick with that stupid cold thing that's been going around. And I, 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 yeah, I gave it to her apparently. And um, she is um, almost healthy. And she, my, my daughter, and my father in law, and my sister in law will be going to Paris. Oh, wow. For like nine days. And dad gets to stay home. So I'm giving a shout out to my wife who is giving me a staycation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, wife, um, thank you so much. Yes, <laughs> but more importantly, my my family is very understanding because all this takes time—not just creating the content, but all the editing, all the you know. Uh, I, some of what I do on the channel is I live stream uh, some songwriter showcases, which means leaving the house. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm gone. I'm gone for you know five hours for a three-hour show. They're very understanding, very patient, and and they understand that it just it, it this is my band, basically. I like I used to be a musician, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, yeah I still, and I saw it I, on the website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm not um I I I know what it's like to load gear at two in the morning and, mm -hmm. and maybe make fifty dollars. I, I get that. Um Yeah, and without your family or people who have your back, you cannot do this. And they have to know that you cannot be there every birthday. That you miss uh, important dates because you have a gig, or uh, that you go to bed early at eight so you can get up at two o'clock in the night so you can put on a full makeup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. for an interview. <laughs> uh, also, shout out to to Vero because it's it's like four thirty in the morning where she is at this so moment. Yeah, thank you so very much. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you welcome. so very much. Um, and uh, I, I'm I am feeling extremely guilty, but that's okay. I said so, yes to this interview, so don't be. I, yeah. So um, I want to shift over to one of my more usual interview questions, and it, this is one that any OG Room Sixers, anybody who's watched my interviews, they know what's coming. But it, it, I feel this is a great interview question because um, it's not. It, it it it. I'm trying to help you narrow narrow down something to a, a definite moment. Do you remember a moment where you, you you had that like earliest musical influence moment of when you said, I want to do that? Uh, yes, I think I was about three years old and it was Life 8. And uh, I don't know if I was there in the moment, but my father also recorded it. So we watched it over and over and over again. And We Are The World was like, for me, an anthem. I I loved it and I did not know what it was about because as a three-year-old Dutch girl, you don't know English yet, back then. Now the kids can do everything nowadays, but uh, back then that was <laughs> unusual. Uh, I was already do playbacking and winning a lot of things with that, but then um, I really was like, I want to be on the stage singing my own songs. So as a child, I already made like this little rhymey things, like total crap <laughs> about playing with my dolls or uh, I want to climb a tree and I made a whole song out of it. Nice. Um, yeah, that was definitely a, one of those pivotal musical moments in, in world history that no, you know, everybody over a certain age remembers that 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 happened and that yeah i was three years had. old and i just watched a movie on netflix and i it brought me back to my childhood and i noticed that all the artists that were in life eight i followed them through my life and their careers because they influenced me a lot and also bet midler the movie beaches that is one of the uh, most important movies that i remember from my childhood it was so intense. It was not even for children. Nowadays, they would say, okay, it's drama. It's about death. It's about all this kind of stuff. It's 60 year and old, 16 year and old. But back then, I uh, got out of bed and I watched it with my mom. And yeah, Beth Midler, she's one of my biggest influences because she has like this pure, raw uniqueness and still really human even though she's a big star i think if i met her i sit down with her have a cup of coffee or tea she would be one of the kindest persons to talk to and down to earth and yeah 
but that's my imagination about her as a fangirl. <laughs> that is, I, I've heard something like that about her, where um, she's not too big for you know for the room, so to speak. Mm -hmm. She's very much like, no, no, I'm just normal. Don't worry about me. Uh, I'm glad you like what I do, you know, and that's about it. Um, so from there, we touched. Uh, you touched briefly on on you know how. The poetry, which of course leads to the music, helped you uh, deal and process with with trauma in your life. Mm -hmm. And I know you've also done modeling. Yes. And the the modeling is, um, I I looked through your Instagram page. Sorry, but uh, a lot of the modeling seems to be very much in, uh, you empowering yourself or you saying, you know, look at me. I'm I'm happy with my body. I'm happy with you know this this look or this filter or whatever and i was wondering which is more therapeutic the modeling or the music it's both uh the modeling i did also all my life i was a child model um i just gonna jump into it i have crohn disease i have a colostomy bag and one of the things to start healing and appreciate myself still for who i was and help me with self-confidence was doing before I got back, I did my first uh, Glamour nude shoot. And after I had my back, I did it again just to see who I was still and that I could be also with my handicap still a beautiful person inside and out. So uh, with that, I also give empowerment to others. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And I actually took other people with bags to concerts and uh, saunas and just to help them also overcome. And it's not that I'm some kind of a power woman who appreciate everything about her because I can be very insecure still, but I think everybody is. Yeah, and that's part of the human condition. Uh, but also, if you don't know this already, viewers, musicians, especially singers, we are an insecure bunch. Yeah, because you're are. always right there oh. and you cannot hide anything, especially not for the photographers who love to have you in your worst angle. <laughs> yeah, I I am one of those photographers that I, I do my best. As part of the channel, I do review videos of live shows and, you know, you're trying to capture moments, but there are some singers that I just know from experience now, I have to take a whole bunch of shots and, and pick out the ones that are not them going... You know, um, yeah, the problem and, is when and, you sing, you do this, yeah. you get this, and this is not charming, yeah. <laughs> and if they, well, it's, it's just, I just notice how certain faces shapes lend themselves to just being very photogenic, no matter what you're doing, and other face shapes, you just look like you're in pain, yes, <laughs> half the time when you're singing, but that, that's because I'm you're capturing a moment, whereas. I also take video clips and I, I do voiceover talking on my review videos. I show some photos. I show some video clips of their set performing because just, to, you know, I, I show the best photos I got, but I'm not a professional photographer with professional gear. I do my best. Um, so the video clip hopefully shows like, no, no, this, this, is, norm this is what they normally look like. So uh, one of um, the best comments I got one time and they removed the picture happily. Uh, it was like, when you sometimes sing and give your full power, it looks like your microphone is a really big hot dog and you want to swallow it at once. I'm like, yes, please remove that one. <laughs> no. They that's they could have gone somewhere else with that comment, but yeah. Yeah, let's uh, not go there. <laughs> I get enough of those in my inbox already. Th that's funny. <laughs> yeah, because the internet's gonna internet, I know. Um, so from there. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick moment here, quick little break, to hear a message from future Josh. So, um, also, I think I'm empty, so booze break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. As some of you know, I enjoy the occasional whiskey on this channel. Tasting and reviewing whiskeys makes me feel so... gourmet. And that goes for trying out food from other countries, too. Sometimes I wish I could take a tasting trip around the world. Fortunately, there's Try the World. Try the World is the first gourmet tour around the world, but with no plane ticket needed. Just go to trytheworld.com and subscribe to receive a gourmet box from a different country like France, Japan, or Brazil every month. 
discover a dozen of the best gourmet and cultural finds in each box, accompanied by beautifully illustrated culture guides explaining how to enjoy the food. Their site offers gift boxes, the premium signature boxes, and the very affordable snack boxes. I'm all about the snack box because you get five different snacks from five different countries every month. Normally, snack box subscriptions are 19 bucks a box, but you do get a discount for an annual commitment. That's a price even musicians can afford. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get $10 off your snack box order by entering the coupon code SNACKBOX10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Try the World for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. We're back, and if you enjoyed that sponsor spot, if that interested you at, at all, please consider clicking the link down in the description. You'll save some money, I'll get some money, win-win. Um, stick around, we're going to be seeing a music video from Heaven Queen called A Kiss to Take Your Breath Away, featuring some uh, live concert footage, and uh, that sounds awesome. And if you're just joining us, what are you doing jumping in the middle of a video? I've got Vero here from Heaven Queen, and we have a couple more questions, and then we're going to get to that music video. Now, you, you mentioned how um, you haven't uh, done a lot of shows together as Heaven Queen, just because, you know, being spread out and, and the world being what it is. I was wondering, what is your favorite show memory of performing, just period? What is that one memory you have, like, ch you know, it checked off your rock star wish list or things went really crazy? Um, we had our uh, album release party and uh, there should be like 180 people. And then there was a code red in the Netherlands. So people were forbidden to go on the streets and travel and people still try to come to the show. But for most of them, it was just impossible because there was no public transport or anything. So uh, we had as our oh, guest, no. we had uh, Imperia. And this sounds me really crappy, maybe that I gonna say it like this, but instead of 180 people, we had 16 people. And at that moment, those 16 people, they filled my heart that they still were going through all that weather drama and still were there to support us. And yes, they took a chance to be there. That kind of love that they give you at that moment. And then my parents were also there and I was singing Star Child for the first time on stage. It is about my uh, deceased children. And with my mom in front of the audience, looking all proud with a tear in her eye. And I still nail that song without starting to cry myself. And after that, uh, people came to me. I had a little brother. I had a little sister. I lost also my children. At that moment, I knew that our music was touching hearts and that it really meant a lot to, to people. And also one of the songs on the album is Highway of Life. That is about, uh, in whatever situation in life you are, just go for it. Keep pushing forward. Try not to look back to most. And, uh, a very, uh, appreciated fan and now also a friend of the band. He's going through, uh, chemo as we speak. And his mantra is that song and those kind of things you hear if you do live shows and you have your chats after the show. The moment that somebody connects to our music and they uh, get empowerment and uh, trust in life because of our music, I think, yeah, that is the best thing. That is the most memorable thing. And uh, to be able to provide that service is one of the best things and that's why I do it. And I always said, it doesn't matter how many people are listening to our songs, as long as I can touch a few souls, it's all worth it still. Of course, I hope it will be thousands, maybe even millions, but that is the basis. And that is also the most memorable thing. The moment I got off that stage and I hear those stories and you, your music means so much to others. That gives you all the drive you need to move forward. Wow. Yeah, that is powerful. I've never had something like that. Uh, that is 
I can definitely see how that's all the inspiration you need to get back on or, you know, to start writing new music again. Um, so I guess, I guess good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know it wasn't the, the happiest, you know, of, of song topics, but, um, no, but it's, that's, that's it's important. real, it's live. And, uh, yeah. I'm just immensely grateful that I'm able to do this. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> from there, switching things up a little bit. Um, now, you're, uh, I, I hate to say it this way, but you're just singing in the band, right? You're not doing any instruments? No, I played uh, violin when I was younger, but uh, I had to stop that. But I do all the lyrical writing the melody lines and all the music it's done by my uh, by my man right i'm on. just a singer okay just a singer. yeah i'm the hey, one hey. with the load in with oh my god my mic is too heavy yes <laughs> yes oh my harmonica or oh my you know yeah um i trust me none of this goes anywhere <laughs> it stays right here but um yeah i get it um so from there i wanted to ask you how, other than Eindhoven, have you performed music anywhere el outside of the Netherlands? Yes, our first show was actually in Belgium at the festival. Oh, right. Sorry, you said that. So, um, my cat you is grew up gonna in the nice, by the way. Cause That's fine. He's scratching my. Hi, ah! White Sox. Oh, there goes instant viewer uptick. There it goes. Oh, there, <laughs> there's, you know, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe now. All right, so. Uh, the re the reason I'm what I'm trying to get at is, you've grown up in the music scene in you know in in, in the Dutch music scene pretty mm -hmm. much right, and I was wondering if you had experienced the music scene in the states at all. Have you had a chance to come to the states? No, but it's a big bucket list item. I really would so love to go to the states. Yes, we'd love to have you in Vegas. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I want to go for one time in my life, and this is something I said since I was puberty. I just want to go to Vegas, get drunk, get to strip bars, and then get married and divorced in one evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hey. this really because we have this singer in the Netherlands. I forgot his name, but uh, it's called her song "I See You in Vegas," and it has all those ingredients in it. <laughs> so. When I was young, that song really hit to me, and I was like, "One day I'm gonna get married and divorced in Vegas, just because I can." <laughs> yeah, it was good enough for Britney Spears, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, if there's anywhere you can do that, it would be here. Right on. So we have one more question. You made it. Last question. Oh! Yay. <laughs> no, you can. And then we're gonna come check... more questions. I'm here <laughs> anyway. <laughs> they're here anyway it's almost five in the morning where you are yes all right um so uh yeah that, that's 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 i don't care what kind of musician you are that's still late <laughs> but um last question and this is another one that you know room six fans know this question i ask it of all my prey i ask it every interview at the end um uh, we're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question we're, we're going to jump in a time machine and we're going to go talk to little Vero. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to little you. Okay. And this is not a, um, not so much a, 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 what advice would you give? It's more of, if you, you had one piece of information that you could give little you or give some new musician, some just starting out, you know, little kid or whatever. It's like, I want to be like you. What is one thing that you wish you could go back and say, you're going to need to know this. Stay away from predators and people who are telling you to have to change. Because yeah. uh, a lot of people want to form you like how they want you to be. But you're not making real, genuine music if it doesn't come from the heart. So don't try to be anything else but you. Because you're good enough. Couldn't say it any better. I mean, it, it goes that's true for anybody of any age, really. But yeah, especially... Um, uh younger females in the metal scene but also males like, don't rub them out yeah, there also males yeah 
Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm thinking like an American. Okay. But there's there's definitely there's definitely it's still it's not as big of a problem as it was here in the metal scene. Mm. But it, it's still every so often I, I interview somebody and they're just like, oh, yeah, I ran into this and this and this. Um, whereas I run the funny thing is in the punk scene. Not, not really a problem at all. They're yeah, but somehow super, women you know. are still not taken serious. For example, I uh, did a lot of touring with bigger bands as tour manager and most of all Merch Girl. Uh, and I'm not going to tell which band it was, but um, we had a tour manager who normally was a stagehand. But the uh, label signed him to be the tour manager on the tour. And at one point it was like, Vero, you have more experience. Can you help me with this and this? So I did. And at one point we come to a venue and I, with the tour managing stuff, I go to the people, tell them what to do. And at one point they just ignored me and went to the other guy who did not really know what to say and do. So halfway the tour, we decided to introduce me to everybody that I was his wife and I had his permission to speak for him and that's how they started to listen to me wow so instead of me taking as a genuine person myself knowing what to do i had to be clenched to a guy to be able to my to do my job and this is still Man, happening those are the moments wouldn't that be great if you could if that person saw you on stage and be like oh <laughs> oh they got it yeah <laughs> so with that I want to thank thank you for coming on the channel. I want to thank you for watching the channel. And um, stick around. We're going to see the music video for A Kiss. To Take Your Breath Away. What is it? A Kiss to Take a Your kiss, Breath Away. A Kiss to Take Your Breath Away. There it is. It's, uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. So we're going to see the music video for A Kiss to Take Your Breath Away. And then we'll see you in the outro. Can I, uh, can I meantime, say one more I thing? Get... Yeah. Just go to uh, heavenqueen.com. Register for our newsletter. Go see our merchandise. Listen to our music. And also on Facebook and Instagram, La Fero Official or uh, Heaven Queen Band. Heaven Queen, we both have them. Um, at Heaven Queen Facebook page, we soon will drop the news that we are going on a small tour, our first tour. And we are very, very excited. Yay! Yay! <laughs> now, here's the question before we uh, go to the music video. Will there be Heaven Queen calendars at the merch table on tour? There is already a calendar. You can order it online. I know there is. I'm saying, are you going to take them with you? Of course. And I That's will sign them calendar. for people. Hey, there you go. Um, all right. So with that, we're going to temporarily say goodbye and go check out this music video for A Kiss to Take Your Breath Away. Temporarily say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. See you in a bit.
Your lifeless lips prepare for your lost exhalation. I choose where your soul goes. I decide. Drowning in cold water or have a place between the stars. I want to thank Lavero for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. If you want to know more about Heaven Queen or Lavero, hit those social media links that I put down in the description. And if you are anywhere remotely close to the Netherlands, swing, you know, catch them live. That being said, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click up there, ring the bell. You know the drill. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not symphonic metal, click over there. Remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Meryl. With love and thank you for having me. The best goodbye ever. <laughs>